Alana from Kids Read to Kids. This is my American Girl reading doll, Kit. We're at chapter four of Read All About It by Valerie Tripp. So let's get started. Chapter four, The Attic. After dinner, Kit climbed slowly up the stairs to the attic. She looked around at the lumpy, dusty piles that surrounded her. Then she sank down to the floor, overwhelmed by sadness. When she'd been wishing for a change so that she could have a dramatic headline, she'd never imagined this. Terrible changes, and so many, and so fast. Dad had lost his job. She had lost her room. And in a way, they were going to lose their house. They'd still be living in it, but it wouldn't be the same when it was filled up with strangers. Nothing would ever be the same. Kid almost never cried. She bit her lip now and fought back tears. Then suddenly, Sterling's head appeared at the top of the stairs. What are you doing out of bed? Kit asked, roughly brushing away a tear. Kit could tell that Sterling knew she'd been crying, but all he said was, I'm bringing this stuff from your room. He came all the way up the stairs and handed Kit a box. Kit noticed that the photo of Ernie Lombardi, wrinkled but smooth flat, was on top. Thanks, said Kit. I brought you a tack too, said Sterling. He gave Kit the tack and looked around. I guess you could put Ernie Lombardi up anywhere you want to up here, can't you? He said in his weirdly husky voice. Then he disappeared down the stairs. After Sterling left, Kit looked down at the photograph. She felt oddly cheered to see it. Old Snifflenose Sterling is right, she thought. I guess I could put anything anywhere I want up here. Kit looked around the long, narrow attic. The ceiling was steeply pitched. There were regular windows at each end of the room and dormer windows that jutted out of the roof and made little pointy roofed alcoves, each one about as wide as Kit was tall. The windows went almost all the way to the floor of the alcoves. Kit managed to open one of the heavy windows. She knelt down, stuck her head out, and came face to face with a leafy tree branch. At that moment, Kit got a funny, excited feeling. She knew exactly what she wanted to do. Over the next few days, Kit was glad that no one seemed to care what she was up to in the attic. When she wasn't helping Mother downstairs, she hauled buckets of soapy water up there and scrubbed the windows till they sparkled. She swept the floor and pushed the boxes far to one end of the room. Finally, the cleaning was done and the fun part began. In one alcove, Kit put a desk and a chair and her typewriter. That was her newspaper office alcove. In another alcove, Kit tacked up her photo of Ernie Lombardi. On a nail, she hung her catcher's mitt. That was her baseball alcove. In the third alcove, Kit made bookshelves out of boards and arranged all her books on them. She found a huge chair that was losing its stuffing and shoved it into the alcove and softened it with a pillow. That was her reading alcove. The last alcove was Kit's favorite. She put a lumpy mattress on an old bed frame and pushed the bed into the alcove with the pillow near the window. She surrounded the bed with some of Mother's potted plants. That was her treehouse alcove. The very first night Kit slept in her treehouse alcove, Mother came up to tuck her in. She sat on the edge of Kit's bed and looked around the attic. Well, said Mother, a place for every interest and every interest in its place. I can see that you worked hard to make this attic your room. I'm proud of you, Kit. Thanks, said Kit. I'm sorry I haven't had time to help you, said Mother. I'm afraid I left you all on your own. That's okay, said Kit. Mother kissed Kit's forehead, then she picked up Kit's book. Still reading Robin Hood? she asked. Yep, said Kit. Robin Hood gave me the idea to make a treehouse alcove to sleep in. Kit also had plans for a swinging bridge to connect the window ledge to the tree just outside the window, but she didn't tell Mother. It was going to be a secret escape, like Robin Hood had. Good old Robin Hood, said Mother, robbing the rich to give to the poor. Kit propped herself up on her pillows and looked at Mother. Too bad there isn't any Robin Hood today, she said. If rich people had to give some of their money to the poor, it would make the depression better. It would help, said Mother, but I don't think it would end the depression. What will, said Kit. I don't know, said Mother. Lots of things, I suppose. People will have to work hard, use what they have, face challenges, stay hopeful.
She looked around Kit's attic and smiled. I guess they'll have to do sort of what you've done up here in your attic. They'll have to make changes and realize that changes can be good. Then she kissed Kit again. Good night, dear, she said. Don't read too late. I won't, said Kit. Good night. After Mother went downstairs, Kit flipped over onto her stomach and looked out the open window. She could hear the leaves rustling outside and see stars peeking through the branches. Changes can be good, she thought. That sounds like a headline to me. That was chapter four of Read All About It by Valerie Tripp. Stay tuned to the next episode for chapter five and head to kidsreadtokids.com for our American Girl lesson plans and for any other resources. Happy reading!